this tiny vial may contain a fountain of youth. Well, let's say even more than one. But today what I want to do is give you guys a crash course in what I really think are the important peptides for longevity. It sounds like science fiction, but people have started using peptides and they're getting insurmountable improvements in health and well-being and biomarkers. I really think we need to narrow it down a little bit and I want to talk about the peptides that I think are the most useful because you really realistically can't take 25 peptides. Most of us can't afford that. It becomes unmanageable. What I want to do is tell you my top peptides. Some of them you're going to be familiar with and some of them I think you might be a little surprised at. Understanding what peptides are first. Most of you guys know that. Think of them as tiny messenger proteins. These proteins contain short chains of amino acids. Your body naturally produces tons of peptides. They act as signaling molecules for doing everything from telling insulin to go into your cells to coding hormone production. And as we age, our own natural production of many of these peptides declines significantly. And that's where supplements and hormones are supposed to come in and sort of mimic these natural peptide responses. But what would be better is giving the peptide itself. So those peptides that are declining as we age, being able to replace them is always going to be a better thing. If we look at what happens with age, the decline of our immune system is number one in really all the processes that go along with aging. And that's because our thymus gland, giant gland in our chest, starts turning into a little fatty nub at the time of puberty. So really quite early. And by the time you're older, it's really not a thymus gland to protect your immune system. So the thymus gland makes these thymic peptides. These thymic peptides are really the immune modulators for us. Unlike medications that either maybe boost up the immune system or suppress the immune system, thymus alpha-1 brings balance. It enhances response, but suppresses excessive immune activity. The research on TA1 is really compelling. It shows that it improves the function of T cells. It reduces systemic inflammation. It supports recovery from viral infections. It helps with autoimmune disease. What makes it even more interesting, honestly, is unlike many peptides, it actually does have FDA approval for certain conditions for an off-label purpose. My experience with thymus alpha one has been remarkable, particularly with those who have autoimmune diseases, recurring infections, chronic inflammation, or even just my older patients whose immune systems are starting to decline. A lot of us have latent Epstein-Barr virus sitting in it. But our immune systems should be able to keep that under control, keep it harnessed in. But when our immune systems start failing, that virus starts replicating. It starts taking over. And when that happens, all the other processes the immune system should be attending to go awry. So this is a really valuable peptide used appropriately, ongoing for a while. It's also a very safe peptide. It's a drug called Zodaxin in other countries, a widely used drug in places like Asia and India for immune compromised people with cancer and things like that. You know, we have a drug that's available in other countries already shown to be safe and effective. Let's use it here. And number two that I think everybody can get, it's so valuable, is body protective compound 157 or BPCC-157. BPCC is often called the Wolverine peptide because of its remarkable healing property. It's really derived from gastric juices. So yes, your stomach, but its benefits go far beyond that. It is able to repair the stomach lining. So it's great for peptic ulcer disease. Or if you're taking anti-inflammatory drugs, one of the risks of anti-inflammatory drugs is a lot of gastritis disturbing the GI lining. And you can protect that simply by putting people on BPC. BPC is so powerful in its healing properties throughout the body by promoting new blood vessels, increasing growth hormone receptors, protecting different organs from damage, reducing inflammation and injuries by supporting the gut health. Research is really quite strong for this in terms of its effects on tendon and ligament and muscle healing, with some studies showing markedly faster recovery. But beyond physical injuries, BPC has a lot of benefit for internal injuries too. So we use it a lot orally for people with gut problems. It's very beneficial in that realm. How about peptide number three? I'm going to say that one of the things that we know we really need to restore with age is our circadian rhythm. So the third peptide is the most important thing for that. Epitalon is a synthetic peptide from a pineal peptide called epithalamin, and this is a synthetic version. It stimulates the production of telomerase, an enzyme that helps protect our telomeres from shortening. And we know that telomeres are the protective caps 
on the ends of your DNA. Each time your cells divide, that DNA gets a little shorter until finally you have these very short telomeres and you die. So the cell becomes senescent or dies as those telomeres short. And we know the epitalon in both animal and human studies had really remarkable results in protecting telomere life. Epitalon has been known to restore circadian rhythm. So it's like a circadian reset. It can improve sleep quality by normalizing melatonin production. It can enhance immune function. And it potentially, early studies showing some improvement in tumor development. What's particularly interesting about epitalon is it seems to help restore cellular functions to just a much more youthful level, to a point where our cells kind of remember how to do it when we were young. So the typical protocols usually will do this for like 10 day cycles a few times a year just to act as that reset, encouraging ourselves to know what to do better. The fourth peptide that I use a lot and that I really love is GHK copper. I think we forget about GHK copper. It's not quite as flashy as the other peptides, but it's been widely touted for its skin benefits and it's in a lot of skin creams and things like that, but it goes much deeper than that. GHK copper naturally occurs in your blood and there's a significant decline after your 20s. What happens is we get increased collagen and elastin. One fascinating study found that GHK copper in older individuals had a positive effect on over 500 different genes. Unlike some other peptides, GHK can actually be used topically or systemically. And if you use enough of it topically, you can get some of the systemic benefits. And number five that you guys need to keep an eye on is humanin. So humanin is less well known than most of these other peptides, but it's really neat because it's one of our mitochondrial peptides. It's encoded by the mitochondrial DNA rather than the nuclear DNA. And the research on humanin is pretty incredible for its neuroprotective properties. So it appears to protect neurons from various forms of damage. It improves insulin sensitivity. It reduces oxidative stress. It's been most researched in its work on Alzheimer's. This may be one of the most powerful mitochondrial peptides to protect against neurodegenerative diseases that we have. But what about from a longevity perspective? Because it also really seems to have some great anti-aging properties. One groundbreaking study found that human in levels were significantly higher in oxygenarians and their offspring compared to other people. So while human in is still a little more experimental than some of the peptides, the research is really promising. We have all these people who have macular degeneration. There's not a whole lot of great treatments for macular degeneration. Human in helps that oxidative stress that's contributing to macular degeneration. Let's talk about your favorite of all peptides and the ones that have gotten so much publicity. GLP-1 or glucagon-like peptide 1 is naturally produced in your body after you eat. And it plays a really crucial role to metabolic health. It slows gastric emptying, it stimulates insulin release, it suppresses glucagon release, and reduces appetite through direct activation in some of the brain centers. So while they gained all their fame for weight loss, their longevity benefits are what really give this peptide the power. They markedly reduce inflammation throughout the body. They significantly improve cardiovascular health. The studies on cardioprotective benefits of these peptides is phenomenal. They can protect against neurodegenerative diseases. In fact, there are phase four trials looking at these as a treatment for neurodegenerative diseases. They're particularly helpful in reversing and protecting against fatty liver disease. Much like our human, but more systemically, we can get significant improvement mitochondrial function. A low dose of this peptide, I think, needs to be included in your longevity peptide realm. The side effect profile is very low when you use a low dose. The benefits are huge. So there are my peptides that I think everybody should be aware of and everybody should be thinking about adding to the regimen for longevity. Remember, TA1, epitalon, and GHK copper, cuminin, the GLP-1 agonists. And as I promised, the combination of these have significant synergistic effects. You can use one, use the next, but if you're using them ongoing, cycling off and on different ones, you're going to actually get the most benefits because we're attacking aging and health from a lot of different pathways when we're using these peptides. So remember, while peptides are so powerful and there's so much out there on using them, but I really think finding a good provider who knows how to use these, how to cycle these, where to get safe versions of them is really key. And it's important to have a guide to help you along the way. This YouTube video, please give it a like, please share it. I hope you'll join us for more and we'll see you on the other side.